2005 Land Rover Discovery. This is the Discovery 3. Uh, as you can see, it's on a private plate, J222 CEM. Um, being an 05, it is before the tax hike, so it'll be the cheaper tax as well, which is nice. 2.7 litre TDV6. Manual gearbox, this one as well. Um, it is an S specification, but it does have a few optional extras, which we'll point out as we go around. We'll start by having a look at the bodywork. See, it's in this lovely metallic grey. Nice and clean and tidy on that driver's front wing and this side of the clamshell bonnet. All the plastics are lovely and clean. They're not dried out or caked and back to black or anything like that. They're lovely and clean all the way around. Really, really good. We're on the uh, five spoke, 18 inch alloy wheels. They could do with a proper clean. There's some baked on brake dust and stuff like that. Good acid wheel cleaner will get rid of most of that for you. Um, nice and tidy on the rim. It's not been curbed up or anything like that. Plenty of tread left in the tires. Inside the arch itself, nice and clean and tidy. Coming down this driver's side, all good on the driver's door. It has the usual issue where it's got the little bits of bubbling in the uh, in the little aluminium and uh, black rubber covered trim. Pretty much every Land Rover, Range Rover from the early 2000s does this. You can see it just sort of lifts up a little bit. Um, you can buy the trim kit to replace those if it bothers you. Um, you have to get nice and close to notice it, but it is worth pointing it out. Nice and tidy up this A pillar and along the lead edge of the roof there is all good. As is the bodywork above the windows all the way along. Got a little bit of a dent just here. You might just be able to see that. Nice and clean on that rear door. Got a very light scratch above the handle there. But other than that, all good. Arches are all nice and tidy. Another good wheel and tire. Like I said, I've got some baked in brake dust, as you can see. If we look back up this side, you can see it is a nice straight thing. It's not full of ripples or filler or anything like that. Tidy on that rear pillar. So it's still in the standard backlights quite often people changing for the newer ones, but standard ones look so much fresher, I think, these days. Nice and clean on both sides on those. Rear bumper sits nice and level. It's got the fixed tow bar. Still has the cover for the electrics. That's never there. They're normally gone by now. Rear parking sensors. Nice and clear on that deck lid. If we're being really picky, paint's faded on the uh, wiper arm. All the plastics around here are all good. We've got a little bit of a sort of bubble in the paint just there on the bottom of the window that one's sort of cleaned off. Coming around onto the passenger side, if you look up this side again, nice and straight all the way up. Around the windows on this side, lovely and tidy all the way along. Nice clear glass, it hasn't got any nasty aftermarket tints or anything in that. Rear quarter, all nice and tidy, as are the plastics on this side as well. Another good wheel and tire. Like I say, brake, brake dust on that as well. Little stone chip just here. We've got a little bit of a mark on the paint there, but it does feel like it's sitting on top of the paint, so I should polish out. And a very light scratch just down the bottom here. A couple of little marks on the lead edge of the door where it's been opened on something. That is being, being quite picky. This bit of trim, Amazingly, is absolutely fine. Got one or two little bubbles just starting on the front one. Um, it's actually worse on the other side, but this side is a bit better. Little scratch on the driver's door here and a light scuff on the outside of the wing mirror. But like I say, all the plastics are lovely and clean. They're not dried out. They get a sort of white speckle to them or caked in back to black, which you never know what it's hiding. These are just nice and clean and tidy. And then this front wheel, it's got some lacquer peel all over it. So I'm guessing that's been the spare at some point because they sit underneath the car. Um, so that would want refurbed if you want to bring that back to how it is. Nice and tidy on the headlights. Normally they need a polish, but these are good. All your plastic bumpers on the corners are nice. Lower half of that front balance is all good. Grill's nice and tidy. Normally they're caked in stone chips, but this one's good. And actually very few stone chips on that leading edge of the bonnet. One decent one there on the, uh, on the bonnet itself. But other than that, all good. And nice and clean along the windscreen. So the S trim car has got cloth interior. Um, this one does have cloth. However, it does have front and rear heated seats, which is quite rare. Nice and clean on the door card. It also is an optional extra. Harman card and sound upgrade, which does make a big difference. So you get the speaker in the dash and a few extra ones as you go around. So here on the door, that sort of stuff. Driver's seat, generally really good. There's no real wear on the bolsters or anything like that. A Little bit of wear on the steering wheel across the top, but other than that, all good. Definitely looks right for 127,000 miles. 
Well, I'd say it was good for 127,000 miles, sorry. Like I say, we've got heated seats on the front, heated seats in the rear, larger stereo, parking sensors, aircon, of course. This one is a manual. Electric handbrake works well as well. Normally they can have a bit of a squeal if they want to, but that one's, this one's all good. We'll fire it up in a second and go through all that. Nice and clear on that rear door card. Rear bench is all good. Obviously these are all split folding seats so you can get to the uh, two full size seats in the rear. Um, you can lift that up there. You've got all this access straight in. I'm six foot two and I can fit in one of those. So pretty good for anybody else. All the seats in the back, like I say, are nice and tidy. The pockets on the backs of the seats are not stretched out. Like I mentioned, we've got re rear heated seats, rear aux controls. All the carpet sets lovely and dark. It's not ingrained with dirt. There's no funny smells in there or any trapped moisture. Split tailgate on the rear. It's all nice and smooth. It's sitting as it should. There's nothing nasty hiding in any of the gaps. And again, obviously, you've got those two rear seats. All the bins and things like these. These can all quite often get quite scratched up, but these ones are all lovely and tidy. Headlighting in here is very good. We do have um, a screen for the rear as well, which I believe has got a DVD or a PlayStation in the uh, in the glove box, which we'll have a look at in a second. Um, it's a Rossum one, which I believe are the ones that Land Rover put in themselves. There you go, nice and easy that. Like I said, no real marks or anything on this rear bench. Nice and tidy on the backs of the doors. Door card on this side is good as well. And then front passenger side, nice and neat on that door card. The passenger seat itself, lovely and clean and tidy. Quite often with this this trim, if you're getting in that with wet trousers on the rain or anything like that, it can uh, it can stain. But this, these ones are lovely. Uh, and then in here we've got so yeah, you've got a PlayStation in the top there, which powers that TV screen. A little bit of wear on the handbrake uh, on the steering gear, which always happens. Every single manual Discovery I think I've ever seen needs a new one of them. I think they're about seventeen quid for a new one, dead easy to replace as well. But being really picky, actually, I did notice that the Astray here doesn't want to stay in. Quite common is again. It wants the new little sort of spring clip that goes in it. I like to point these things out. Was driven to us this one. It's always started on the button, which we'll see in a second. But it's that 2.7 litre turbo diesel V6. All your plastic covers are here. None of those are missing. All the bottles are nice and clear. All the levels look to be right. It does have the fuel burning heater as well. So if you don't know what one of those are, um, it's a factory option. You start the car when it's cold. It will use some diesel to generate some heat for the engine so you can get up to an operating temperature quicker so it's more efficient but also it means you can get some heat in the cabin more importantly nothing dropping out the bottom there like i said it's really useful for the winter you get some heat in the cabin straight away get the heaters on get warmed up nice and quick so if we hop in clean the ignition it's doing its system checks it's going to whinge that the bonnet's open which is fair enough because the bonnet is open like i say this handbrake it's coming off and on happily. There's no squealing. Air suspension sitting nice and level. It'll go up and down quite happily. Shut that there. Nice and smooth up the front. And nothing nasty flying out the back. So there you have it. Land Rover Discovery 3. Lower tax bracket for the road tax. If you have any questions at all, please get in touch. Thank you.